also will ask Brother Umar, Dr. Umar Johnson, to come forth with some comments. Black Power. Black, Black power. power. It's good to be here today with the family. I want to salute the relatives and kith and kin of Dr. Yusuf Ben Yakinin. A lot of people may not know this about me, but I'm one of the ideological and intellectual sons of Dr. Yusuf Ben Yakinin. I was an 18 year old freshman in Lancaster, Pennsylvania at the Millersville University. And the advisor of the Black Student Union decided to send a group of us to Howard University for what was called the Black Consciousness Conference in 1992. And I went to the Black Consciousness Conference and I listened to all the seminars and there was one more seminar on my schedule and I almost didn't go. I was hungry, I had been there all day, wonderful conference. And I said, let me go listen to this last guy with the weird name, Dr. <laughs> Yusuf Ben Yakinin. So I went to the conference and I remember it like it was yesterday. He stood up there in the three-piece suit and as he spoke, my mouth just dropped wide open. He dropped jewel after jewel, and I was just spellbound. And by the time he was done, I said to myself that what that man got, I want to get it. Yes. So from that day forward, I tried to find every video I could find, every tape recording of Dr. Ben I could find. I would go to the Know Thyself bookstore in Philadelphia run by Deacon Dell Jones, the war correspondent. Yes. And I would say, give me that Dr. God bless ben. It. I was just Dr. Ben crazy, and I bought every <laughs> book that Dr. Ben had. And the first full-length book that I read was Black Man of the Nile. Mm. And since that time, I said, I want to do for black psychology what Dr. Ben did for African history. And when I think of Dr. Ben, I think of several key things. One thing is he was convicted. He had conviction. That's something that a lot of us don't have no more where he stood for what was right when it was right and he didn't care about the consequences. Dr. Yusuf Ben Yakinen was convicted. Dr. Yusuf Ben Yakinen, he also had honor. He would stand up for black folks no matter what they had to give him or what he had to get back. And he was willing to sacrifice his name, his credentials, everything he had for the liberty and self-respect of African people. When I think of Dr. Ben, I think of a workaholic, tireless in the struggle for African liberation, never taking a break, never getting enough sleep. And it's just so marvelous and such a miracle to see that he lived to be as long and as old and wise as he did, given that he never took a break from the freedom struggle. I remember Deke Jones once told me that when Dr. Ben worked at Temple University in North Philadelphia, he would put his books together with his bare hands, stitching the pages and handwriting out the books and making photocopies. This is what he did to make sure African people had his work. And I think Dr. Ben and his types are so far gone now because African scholarship has become a scholarship for capitalism as opposed to a scholarship for activism and we got to put the activism back into the African Senate scholarship. But as I close, I just want to say that Dr. Ben is one of my greatest heroes. Of all the scholars that I've met in my lifetime, he would rank number one. And he's one of the few that I actually had the privilege to meet. So I just want to say to all the young people out here, it is our obligation to just keep on pushing and remain as unapologetically African as Dr. Ben was. Black power. Black power. Thank you, Dr. Omar, Dr. Johnson. There's a young brother who came to this community and we welcomed him when much of the community wasn't even welcoming the nation back to Harlem because of all the crisis. But now, thank the brother Hafiz, we know the nation has found their home again. But there was a young minister that came before brother Hafiz. We used to call him the hip hop rap minister. Oh, yes. And so I'm calling brother minister Comrade Muhammad. Comrade Muhammad, Lord to mercy. He got gray hair now, Lord to mercy. Thank you, Brother Small, <laughs> Dr. Uh, Dr. Ben, uh, and all of the elders, Dr. Jeffries and others, I request permission to speak. Permission granted. I, I am here today. Uh, I came all the way from my church in Brooklyn because, uh, as Alton Maddox used to say, uh, when I heard it on the grapevine, I knew that all roads led to 125th Street. I say. And I'm proud to be here in African Square. I'm proud to be in the shadow of the statue of the Reverend Adam Clayton Powell. I say. And the Teresa Hotel where I Brother Malcolm had his office. And to be here with you to remember the great Dr. Ben. 
I am one of those that was blessed to walk these streets, not the gentrified Harlem of today, but the gritty Harlem streets of yesteryear. And one of the great things about Dr. Ben and Dr. John Henry Clark, you didn't have to call their office, you didn't have to hang out outside of a television studio to meet them. You can meet them right here on the streets of Harlem. They are the original community professors and they gave us the original community university. And we cannot forget, we cannot forget how accessible they were to their people. Because if you're going to teach people and lead people, you have to be of people and you have to be comfortable with people. Lastly, I want to say this. That great generation of scholars, black educators, that were unabashed, boldly black, they were not concerned about mainstream academia. They were not concerned about being acceptable to their colleagues and peers. What they were concerned about was teaching us a knowledge of ourselves so that we could be proud of who we are, and because of them, we are proud of who we are. I remember when Henry Louis Gates wrote an article in the New York Times in 1992 about pseudo-scholars. But I want you to know that Dr. Ben was not only, as Minister Hafiz said, a great scholar, not only was he a great teacher, a master teacher, but Dr. Ben was also a master psychologist because after we heard him, we felt better about ourselves. And lastly, I say to the young scholars and young people, we cannot be so concerned about being with the progressive agenda that we forget about the black agenda. We got to understand that Dr. Ben was boldly black, unabashedly black, and we can be no less today. And so black lives do matter. Oh, yes, they do. But they've been mattering. When Huey P. Newton uh, and Bobby Seale and little Bobby Hutton said and Fred Hampton. they were going to defend the black community. And Fred Hampton. Black Lives Matter. When Robert George Cody Jackson. Said that he was going to be and Lenny Patel. Defense, that's because black and lives Russell matter. Means. And so there's nothing new under the sun. And if you're talking today and leading and you don't know about Dr. Ben, then you need to sit down and learn something of a real revolutionary African scholar. I honor him. I honor you. That's why I'm happy to be here today. God bless you and God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In a very short while, we're going to have the unveiling. But just before the unveiling, we're going to have one more brother speak. And then we're going to ask the family first to go over to where the sign is that's covered. And then Sister Sonia is going to start singing at the same time. But before we do that, we want to ask a brother, Dr. Anthony Browder, who has just arrived from D.C., Baltimore. Wow. Brother Paul Coates, who is here, but Brother Coates is not going to make any comments at this time. But Brother Browder, Brother Anthony Browder, will make comments. Tony. Oh, wow. Peace, family. Blessings. Listen, we all know every person has a finite period of time that they will walk the earth. We're only here for a short period of time, and when we're gone, we're gone. There are a handful of people who have left us, but their name and their legacy continues to live long after they are gone. John Henry Clark, John Jackson, Shashi McIntyre, so many brothers and sisters have walked the streets of Harlem, have paid the ultimate price of sacrificing their time, their talent, and their treasure to prepare a way for us. And the only way, the best way that we can honor them is by naming buildings after them, naming institutions after them, naming streets after them, such that every time you speak the name of that building or that street or that institution, they live because you speak their names. So today we're honoring one of the greatest lives that Harlem has ever produced, Dr. Yosef Ben Yaku. And let us, let us make sure that when we walk past this corner, we walk past this corner with dignity and strength, such that we represent the doc everything that Dr. Ben spent his
light bringing to our consciousness so that we would know who we are and we would move through life with strength and determination because there is a spirit that flows through us. A spirit that is older than any other spirit on this planet. A spirit that created cultures and civilizations that the world is still benefiting from. So having Dr. Ben's name enshrined on that street sign ensures that that spirit will live through you. Every time you walk past this corner, open yourself up, allow yourself to receive his energy, allow his spirit to inspire you, to inspire you, so that we, like Dr. Carr, can continue his great and mighty work. Thank you all very, very much. Appreciate your presence here. Brother Tony Browder, who is quite walking and instead, is one of the first African Americans who is carrying on an actual archaeological dig in Ghana, he, in Egypt, in Egypt. You know, I love Ghana. <laughs> in Egypt, and he's actually on his second tomb. And in the second tomb, can you talk about Tony? But Tony, he has to wait. But he discovered some extraordinary things, which fits quite into what Doc has told us when he says we come from the foothill of the mountains of the moon, where the god Happy dwell, which is in the, the papyrus of Nepha. And so he's quite on that work. And soon you're going to hear an explosion of what he has discovered. So now we'll ask the family to get prepared and to get ready to move over to the sign. So we don't want anyone else to move over to that sign yet. Make a path for the family to go over to so we still have time. So we want the family to be first at the sign. If I see anybody else there, I am going to move you out of the way. <laughs> That's the end of that one.